it is, we realize, even when we come here on Sundays, this is a family. This is a, a safe place where we can come and we can worship uh, and hear a word from God. Uh, the thing is, we open up the floor uh, in the mornings for testimony service. I think that's a valuable part of what we do. It gives us an opportunity to share uh, with each other. Uh, we don't see each other all week a lot of times. And when we come in here on Sundays, it gives us an opportunity to say hello and smile. I see that smile on the face. And it really does something for me. Um, even when I don't preach, I come over here every almost every Sunday because I want to be here because I feel like I'm a part of this family. I want to be able to uh, enjoy uh, the fellowship. Amen. And, and so that's important to me. And as we continue to grow this ministry, uh, more and more people may come. Uh, but the Lord lets us know where one or two are gathered in his name. And so whether or not a whole lot of people ever come here, mm -hmm. if one person comes, we're coming. <laughs> and we're going to pray about it. We're going to ask the Lord to give us a word for the people who are here. Because that's really what's important, that's that you be fed. And so it doesn't matter that we don't have a lot of people in here. One day maybe, but maybe never. Mm -hmm. But it's quite all right with me because the same faces that I see, I love to see your faces on Sunday morning. I love to be a part of this fellowship. And so I thank you for coming out. I thank you for being a part of this. And we pray that uh, the Lord will allow us to come many, 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 many uh, in the future, many more, more times. And so the floor is open now uh, for testimony services. If the Lord lays something on your heart, you have something you want to share, uh, the floor is open to you at this time. Well, I woke up early this morning. My heart was beating right on time. I said, Lord, I truly thank you for opening up these eyes of mine. And then I went over to my window. And I Yes, and when I seen that, 
you know, I was trying my best not to look at it because right. when I seen the police was there, I say, oh my goodness, it must be someone acting their fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but when I seen them, the stretcher, I just turned the other way because right. it just shook me so badly. Yeah. Then another resident, I seen him, I said, look like his pants leg were full. Fold. I didn't know, I hadn't seen him in a while. Mm -hmm. So I said, he must have had his leg amputated. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, it just weighed really heavy on yes, me. Yes, ma'am. So I said, just pray for me that yes. he'll take me through. Because yes. seeing stuff like that, it really bothers me. Yes, you know. mm -hmm. So I bless y'all, and I hope y'all will be in prayer for me. Yes, yes. Have a blessed, wonderful that week. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I, I feel like it's uh, it's a good time to pray. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's like you say, it's, it's so much going on in the world. Right. Uh, it's happening to so many people. And no matter what situation we find ourselves in, we realize it could be so much worse. Right. Uh, and so sometimes we spend time complaining about what we don't have and places we didn't get to go and things we didn't get to do and god wants us to just take time and be thankful for what we have uh what we have been allowed to do uh and how he has blessed us this far um children are losing their lives uh young people are losing their lives uh some of it i, I just I, I really don't understand uh, and i'm not the guy to know but uh, Jesus gave his life for sin. And all of the things that people are doing, no more lives really need to be given up for these things out here on the street. Uh, we want to just take a moment and just pray and thank God for uh, life, health, strength. We thank God for another day. We thank God for the people who uh, were sometimes here and, and not here today, but, but they're even their hearts. They might want to be here today, like Elder Williams, uh, some of the people who come sometime and sometimes they can't make it. We pray their strength. We pray that wherever they are on today, that they are right, that everything for them is going well. We pray for uh, just a mind that will allow us to stand strong and be able to face all the adversities that we have to face day to day. It's not easy, uh, but we can do it with God on our side. So let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you on today. We thank you first and foremost for being our Lord and our Savior. We thank you for just loving us so much that you've done so much on our behalf. We thank you that the word says you'll never leave us or forsake us. Lord, it's times when uh, we find ourselves in a dark place. We find ourselves in a low place. Lord, but I thank you that you're there with us. Uh, that you're walking with us. That you're holding us up even in those moments. We thank you for a mind to reach out and pray. We, we thank you for even a mind to pray and ask that you will come in and you'll help us. And now we ask that you would just bless those people who uh, wish they could be here and they're not. We ask that you would just, uh, uh, just shift this atmosphere uh, in a way that we can hear from you on today. We ask for strength. We ask for strength. We ask for courage. We ask for just that you stay. When we stay, you'll stay with us. That we're able to stand in the face of whatever it is that we're faced with, that you'll be there with us. Lord, sometimes things that we see, oh, it's hard for us. It's hard for us to deal with. It's hard for us to even understand. Lord, we ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the strength to be able to stand. Give us the strength to even the calmness, the calm, the emotions that we have, the calm, the spirit that's building up inside of us. Give us just a calm that gives us time to just look and see the beauty of who you are and how it is that you love us and that you're here for us. Lord, we love you on today. And we ask that we just hear from you on today. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing. Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. amen. And thank you. So what we're going to do, I'm going to ask my wife to come up and just open us up oh, yeah. uh, with another selection because we had one already and I thank God for that. Uh, and then we'll get right to the word. Amen. 
as we're talking, as we're going to the store, as we're going to work, as we're going to the, around people, we have a song of worship in our spirit. We just, we just, Lord, I thank you. Now, 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 you know, there's some people that are so thankful they get on your nerves. You know, some people that are always walking around and you know them kind of people, but we ought to be a little more like that. Now, we don't have to run out and stand on the corner and dance around, but inside, we should have a spirit of thankfulness, gratefulness for what God is doing. And, and because of that spirit of gratefulness, we should be telling somebody. You know, we should tell somebody. We should have a smile on our face. Uh, 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 you know, we Christians, we love the Lord. God is good, but we look like, I, I mean, we look like we just mad at everybody all the time. God is good. I mean, it's hard to get somebody, convince somebody how good God is when you're mad all the time. Your attitude is so bad all the time. It's like, man, they, but people are watching. They're watching how you act and how you move in certain situations. And you claim to be a Christian, but they're watching how you act when these certain situations come up. They're watching how you talk about your employer, how you talk about other people. They're listening to you. And so the song of worship should be in your spirit all the time. And, and the Holy Spirit should be governing how you respond to people who treat you bad. The Holy Spirit should be in there regulating how you act when they don't act right towards you. People all ain't, ain't going to always treat you right. See, we just, I was talking about Holy Week. Jesus, our Savior, never committed a sin. Oh, man, they treated him bad. They treated him bad. So, so what is it to us if somebody talks about you a little bit? Now, what are you ready to do to them? They said something bad about you. They called you out of your name. Mm -hmm. Now, what you want to do is hurt somebody. Now, you want to go pick up a gun and they disrespected me. Look at what they did to Jesus. Look at what they did to Jesus. And he never said a moment word. What are you talking about? He never said a moment of word. In fact, when he was on the cross, Y'all know what he did when he was on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. For they don't even know what they're doing. They don't even understand. And so we walk around and we mad because somebody stepped on our shoe. Oh, man, I tell you what, you did what? Come on. Praising our Savior all the day long. Worshiping God. A spirit, something inside of us should be stirred up that that, 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 that we walk a little different. Something inside of us, God, is just a little bit excited, even though it's bad happening around us, but something in me, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because God is moving. God is doing something. I, I have great expectation of what he's going to do today. I know the news says it's all bad, but I have great expectation. Something is about to shift. Something is about to happen. God is doing something wonderful in the earth. Open your eyes, open your ears, and just pay attention. Things are shifting. I know what the news says. I, I listen. I know about the war. I know about the children being gunned down the street. I know about the violence. I hear about all of it. But whose report? You gonna believe? I, I, I choose to believe that God is still in control. I choose to believe that He's gonna handle this thing. I choose to believe that if I put my hand in His hand. He's going to walk with me and talk with me. Oh, man, I believe what the word says. Mm -hmm. And so I thank him on today for all that he's done. I thank him for all he's done. Thank you for the song. It just does something in my spirit. I, I, I love songs, worship songs. I love songs. It does something for me. So if you would, turn with me to Mark, the 12th chapter. We're going to start on verse 30. We're going to go to 31. Verse 30, Mark. We're in Mark 12, verse 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Mm -hmm. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Today, I'm going to just talk just for a little bit, for a little while. I was uh, watching TV this week, and I was watching a show, and it was one of these detective shows. And what the lady was saying to the officer, she said, if we're going to do this, they're talking about what they're ready to do, we're going to do it by the book. And so I started thinking about that. She said, if we do it, we're going to do it by the book. And so I started thinking about that. And I was sitting there thinking, I said, we as Christians sometimes, we say we love the Lord, we claim we love the Lord, but we never read the book. What happens is we order stuff online, we get furniture, we get things around the house, and all of it comes with an instruction manual. Even these new phones that we have come with an instruction manual. A lot of us, if you're kind of like me, you don't read all the instructions. At best, I look at pictures. If there's some pictures up there, how to assemble something, I'll look at the pictures and kind of formulate my own idea and start putting it together based on the pictures. Get to the end sometime and you got a few screws left over, a few things left over, and you say, well, wow, uh, Maybe they gave extra in case I did it a different way. But a lot of us are like that. We, we never really take time to read the book. We never take time to read the instruction manual. But the thing about it is, whoever designed this, whoever made this, whoever uh, 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 is selling this to you, a lot of times they have an understanding of how to make it work in the best way. And so they give you some instructions so that you can check it out, read it, so that you get the full function. A lot of people have these phones. Do you know how to do everything on the phone? Most people don't. Because you, not only do you not know, you really say, I don't really need all that stuff anyway. And, and, and because it's more than what I need, but then, the kids will come along, I'm talking about the phone now, the kids will come along and show you something and say, wow, I didn't even know the phone could do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how it is with a lot of things. And I say as Christians, as people who love the Lord, a lot of times we're going around talking about things and we've never taken time to read the book. So today as a topic for conversation today, Let's say, by the book. We're going to do it by the book. We, we got a lot of different ways that people do things now. Yeah. We were talking a while ago, and sometimes now we have an issue with how people do things. When we were growing up, things were kind of uh, clear. There was a line on this side or this side. You pick the side you want to be on. Mm -hmm. When a little boy was, when a baby was born, it was a boy, you wrapped him in blue and you put him in the thing. Baby boy Johnson, before he ever gave him a name. It was a little girl that wrapped her in pink, put her in the thing. Baby girl Johnson. That was it. Now you take the time and you give him the name. Today, it's different. It's different. I'm not the judge, but it is different now. We got kids in school, you don't really know what to say. You don't know what pronoun to use. I don't know. We don't know how to talk to the children in the school now. It's tough for teachers. I, I, I'm telling you, I think it's really a real tough time uh, for teachers. I, I think it's a tough time for parents too. Matter of fact, because some things you got to do dealing with children, you got to watch what you say. You got to watch how you say it. You got to watch your tone. Either. You got to say it in a way that doesn't get people too upset. See, I'm kind of animated sometimes when I get excited. My hands are moved. I, I move around. Well, in some settings, 
that, that's not good. Mm -hmm. In some settings, then I, I, I can get people nervous because I'm moving too much. So you got to be still. So what I want you to know is we want to do it. Buy the book. The owner's map. We want to look and see the way it's supposed to work the best way. Given to us by the maker. By the book. If we're going to do it since we're already doing it, let's type, take time and read the book, the Bible. And let's then, let's do it by the book. We just read in Mark uh, 12, 30. You should love your Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's the first commandment. The second is love thy neighbor. Well, the thing of it is, it's hard to love the Lord when we don't know the Lord. It's hard to know the Lord if we're not going to read to get to know who he is. It's tough. But that's what we have to do. In Matthew 6, 33, because I want to show you we're going to do it by the book. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things to be added to you. So what I want you to know is, if you need love, it's in the book. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's in the book. If you need peace, peace. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. If you need joy, Psalms 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. It's in the book. You've cried over things long enough. Joy comes in the morning. We want to do it by the book. Some of us say, if we love the Lord, we should start seeking him by reading the Bible. To get an understanding of the way that we should live. How to love God and one another. We want to do it by the book. We're just coming out of Resurrection Sunday. I'm very excited because our Savior has risen. risen. Death has been defeated. I'm telling you, I get excited about it because we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. But Jesus sacrificed his life for my sins. See, so I know I messed up. I know I didn't do things right. I know there's people who judge me still by the things that I've done. There's people who hold me to that. To that. But my sins were forgiven because I asked. God, Jesus went to the cross for my sins. So why are you beating me up about it? You, you understand? Why are you holding me to things that I've done in the past? I'm not living like that anymore. The Bible says I'm a new creation. Today we ain't going to talk too long, but I just wanted our faith to grow. I know we all messed up. And I'm sure I'm going to mess up again. Sometimes we don't feel worthy. Sometimes we don't feel worthy of a good life. We don't feel worthy of a wonderful family. We don't feel worthy of the financial blessings that God has given us. We don't feel worthy. How could Jesus love me as messed up as I've been? But I heard him when he was on the cross. For all those who whipped him, all those who treated him bad. You remember the story. They would crucify him. They whipped him. They beat him. They put a crown of thorns on his head and pressed it down into his flesh. But he's on the cross for our sins. And he's praying to his father. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. So if he can forgive them. Now I messed up, but I didn't do that. 
I've done wrong, but I didn't do that. See, I did some things, but I didn't do that. I've never whipped someone like that. I've never beat someone. I've never spit on someone and done the things that they've done. But he said, Father, forgive them. So did he forgive them? And he's forgiven me as well. They crucified him. They placed him in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose with all power in his hand. We serve a risen Savior. But my main purpose for being here today is to help someone find Christ. To lead someone. To be able to encourage your hearts and minds that people that you come in contact with, we want to lead, help people to see Christ. And so, like I said, we say we love the Lord, but our attitude is really bad. We love the Lord, but we take every opportunity that you get to be able to criticize and talk bad about somebody, gossiping bad about somebody. That really doesn't look very well. It doesn't work that way. We want to be able to lead someone to Christ. Buy the book in Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. The word of God says, that if thou shalt con confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. Your mistakes doesn't disqualify you from salvation. We all have sinned and come short. The thing of it is, we, oh man, we spend a lot of time these days trying to, uh, I think social media makes us compare and do things with other people and, and compare with other people. The thing of it is, if you were to listen to some people talk, maybe God changed his commandments for me. Maybe he made a little sacrifice for me that I can do it just a little bit different and it'll be okay. But it's really not like that. We have to do it by the book. We have to do it God's way. God said, if you believe in your heart, confess it with your mouth, you can be saved. God has a way and an order about how to do things. And my point today is just to let you know we have to do it by the book. We got to do it by the book. We got to spend time to get to know the book, to understand God's way. If you need love, he is love. If you need peace, he can give you peace that surpasses all understanding. You need joy, he can be joy to the word. God can do whatever it is. He can be whatever you need him to be in your life today. We want to do it by the book. We want to do it by the book. We want to do it by the book. We don't want to do it some other kind of way, but we have to get to know the book once a day. That's it. We want to do it by the book. Amen? Amen. Blessed assurance. Right. <laughs> Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising our Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising our Savior, all the day long. Dear Lord, we just thank you on today uh, for another opportunity just to be able to stand and say, Lord, we thank you. Yes. Just to be able to say thank you for all that you've done. 
We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for all that you're going to do. We thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for a place to go. Yes. Lord, where we have no place to go. Yes. Lord, we can find it in your word. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, we can find an answer in your yeah. word. Yeah. Lord, if we search your word as his hidden treasures, we search to find. It says if we seek, we'll find. Lord, we're seeking your word on today. Lord, we ask that you would just do what only you can do in our lives. Lord, give us better understanding of your will for us. Amen. Lord, we love you on today. Lord, now as we leave this place, Lord, but never ever leave in your sight, we ask that you would just go with us, that you would lead and guide us, that you would just go even before us. Lord, and make the path straight. Lord, you would, your angels of protection would go with us and keep us safe. Lord, until we can meet again, in fellowship. Yes. Lord, singing the songs of Zion. Yes. Lord, lifting up your name, saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you would keep us safe until we can meet here again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. 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 amen.